Today on X-Play. Auto Assault. Samurai Champloo. And Tetris. Level up your carburetor. Come here, I wanna kiss you. <laughs> it's game time. The jewels of Nebraska, it's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Hello and welcome to X-Play, soon to be the basis of a splashy Broadway musical. I'm gonna be played by puppets. More than one? Yeah. For a nice change of pace on today's show, we have video games. We've got Toka Race Driver 3, a racing game that features a Scottish pit crew guy who seems to want to make love to you. And we preview Samurai Champloo Sidetracked, a game about a medieval Japanese warrior who is also a DJ. Now, most people don't realize Fatty Tuna Belly actually started out as a club drug. And the most famous communist puzzle game on the planet is back. We review Tetris DS. Which, in case you're confused, is Tetris, but on the DS. Mm -hmm. You know, like, after the show with Oprah. And later in the show, we preview Auto Assault, which is an MMORPG where you ride around in cars. In a post-apocalyptic wasteland. Again, after the show with Oprah. Morgan, you shouldn't toy with the wrath of Oprah. She could strike you down with a single thought. I know, but I have a death wish, and I'm too lazy to participate in any actual dangerous sports, so I have to get my thrills by insulting powerful celebrities. Ooh, piss off Queen Latifah next. No, maybe I'll just review a nice game that involves messy crashes, like Toka Race Driver 3. Hey. Are you quick enough to worry some of the other faces out there today? Oh, yeah? So well, you got a, a, a stupid accent. So there. Don't hold back. And you're also in yet another yeah. racing game we review. Dude, right? So there. And yet, this one ignores that street racing thing, a genre so played out, it'll be appearing in the next surreal life with Gilbert Gottfried and Adam Sessler. So upside, inside out, let's live the Vita Toka with Toka Race Driver 3. The three means it's a sequel. Unless you're an Earnhardt fan, then it's a religion. Yahoo! Number three forever! With over 30 vehicles, 30 challenges, and yes, over 30 tracks, there's plenty of racing here to satisfy your inner Jeff Gordon. Minus the messy divorce and alleged affair with a Canadian exotic dancer, of course. <laughs> now, each car handles differently than the next. Toka's not fooling around here. So, unless you pay attention, you'll be one Toka over the line and hitting more grass than Snoop Dogg on April 20th at 20 minutes past four. Talk about rolling down the street. Take the lid off. You can do it. Oh, that's right. This guy is Rick. He's supposed to help you and support you in all your racing needs. Come here, I want to kiss you. <laughs> uh, I don't think so. I don't date foreigners. So what's it going to be? It's not going to be us, I'll tell you that right now. Now, let's take a look at some of these cars, along with some snarky comments with assorted pop cultural references. This is what I've been waiting for. You finally get your ass in gear. <laughs> You've got your familiar racing cars. We've seen this type of thing before. You've got off-road buggies, if you want to reenact that classic Baywatch episode where Hasselhoff races to Baja. I have hepatitis C in a crappy sitcom. There's monster trucks. If your cable guy is also your health inspector, you might just be a redneck. And classic cars, like this one where you can pretend you're Ashton Kutcher and ride something really, really old. If you've played through the Toka series before, you'll appreciate the World Tour mode, a Vegas buffet of all sorts of racing formats. But if you want more depth, why not try the Pro Career mode for more specific racing? The AI here won't just roll over and let you win. They'll fight for what's theirs. I haven't seen a battle like this since Clay and Ruben. If you can ignore the stationary fans and weather, and if it doesn't bother you that you can't just race any car on any track, then there's more than enough fun to be had. Now that is what I call racing. Fantastic! We give Toka Race Driver 3 four lecherous Scotsmen out of five. Come here, I want to kiss you. <laughs> I hate you, Rick. I really, really hate you. 
Thanks to that Scottish guy, Toka Race Driver can claim the title of most unsettling racing game. So Sony is planning an all zombie racing game with what I hear are really impressive face maggot graphics. Unfortunately, we can't always afford the finest in cutting edge maggot graphics. Mm, sometimes you lose your job. Sometimes your mom doesn't leave her purse unattended. Sometimes your dealer raises his prices. In these unfortunate circumstances, you wonder, how could I possibly afford to have compelling gaming experiences? Maybe you think you're going to have to spend the rest of your life, or at least until your next check from the feed store playing online backgammon. But do not fear, TV friends. We have an answer. A little something we like to call games. They're cheap, bastard. Love you. Oh, hell yeah. Guess what? All you cheap bastards out there are in luck because two of the best games of 2005 are now only 20 bucks a pop. Not that price. That's right. God of War and Resident Evil 4 are now so cheap, if you don't go out and buy them today, I'll do one of two things. Either come to your house, stick a foot in your back, and rip your shoulder blades out like harpy wings, or I'll shoot you up with so much Umbrella Corp virus, you better pray you find more than two halves of an octagon that conveniently fit into a door of a spooky mansion to save your ass. So, in other words, get these games. Why? Well, for starters, God of War features Kratos. This god-killing machine is the biggest badass to ever grace the PS2 or any console for that matter. Let me put it in terms you can understand. Kratos makes Viking cannibal rapists seem like fluffy kittens covered in adorable babies. Here is just a short list of his badassness. He'll push an innocent caged man into a fire just to open a door. A door. And you know what? I bet he could have opened it simply with the sheer power of his awesomeness. I'll also slaughter a room full of centaurs just to watch them die. Molest a bunch of sea nymphs because he senses how much they dig his total oneness with the awesomeness of his being. <laughs> and just for fun, he'll throw a sack of puppies into the ocean. In other words, he is Samuel L. Jackson and you are a snake. A snake that needs to get the hell off his plane. While Kratos will excite you in ways that will make you question your need for a woman, let us not forget Resident Evil 4. In this game, you'll play the incredibly less manly Leon as Kennedy. But what Leon lacks in Conan-style masculinity, he more than makes up for with his commando-sized arsenal. The first time you play the game, you'll be wetting your pants in fear as mutant dogs, satanic monks, and Whistler's mother all try to kill you in horrible, horrible ways. But once you beat the game, repeat play provides a plethora of gun-wielding fun. Like an unmitigated tyrant, you can lay down your special brand of American law, painting the canvas of the cruel Spanish countryside with the brains of your enemy. The truth is, you cheap bastards, that no human words can describe the beauty of these games. How rude! The truth is these games speak for themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you games for cheap bastards. As always, our Games for Cheap Bastards segment presumes you've got $20 to spend on a game. For those of you who don't, we present even cheaper games for even cheaper bastards, brought to you by Buying Things with Quarters. Buying Things with Quarters, they're like a dollar, but heavier. Basically, if you're so poor you can't afford God of War, we suggest you dig through thrift stores until you find an old copy of Sticky Bear Typing for under a dollar. Sure, it won't actually be fun, but maybe if you improve your typing skills, you can get a real job and afford a decent game. After the break. <laughs> Hip hop in the Edo. They are ham fans. It's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Welcome back to X Play. You thought we would leave you, didn't you? And we will, one day, right. because everything you ever love will leave you. Not because you're a bad person, but because the world is a horrible place. And also because you are a bad person. If you'd like to start rectifying yourself to the pain of existence, consider embracing a faith or a philosophy. I worship Baal. And I espouse the philosophies of pop star Pink, who once said, if God is a DJ, life 
is a dance floor. Whatever happened to Pink? Did someone finally shoot her? Now to celebrate Pink's deep reverence for the godliness of DJs, I offer you this preview of Samurai Champloo sidetracked. Get ready, everyone. Another Samurai Champloo adventure is about to begin. This is Samurai Champloo sidetracked. The game based on the anime series done by the guys who did Cowboy Bebop. I know! I am putting aside my usual snide commentary in favor of a more hopeful and optimistic tone. Weird, right? Let's start off with the obvious question. What is a Champloo? <laughs> you may know this, but I'm gonna tell it to you again. Champloo is a word signifying the combination of two unrelated things. For example, swords and turntables. And then they kill some more. Yep, there's a lot of hip hop style in this, but Samurai Champloo doesn't take itself too seriously. <laughs> which is a saving grace all too rare in anime. Would you like to die as well? The game puts our heroes on a digression to the north of Japan. A digression from the plot of the regular TV show, that is. <laughs> They're on a mission to find the samurai who smells like sunflowers. Also, to find food. Lots and lots of food. Okay, let's talk about gameplay. Now this whole little samurai affair takes place before turntables, before hip hop, and before electricity. But this is a champloo, remember? Karate! Karate! So to fight, you equip records, each of which comes complete with a set of branching combo moves. Then you have this crossfader thing that lets you switch between them, like a real DJ. What's cool is it displays the combo tree right there, so you don't have to remember fascinating information like triangle, triangle, x, x, x squared. That way, you'll have more room to remember all the verbal somersaults of a Pamela Anderson novel, as well as the most horrifying moments of Harold and Maude. When your dancing friend here gets a star, you launch a mini-game full of anime excess. Yes, it goes on and on and on. Oh, rest now, reggae dancing man. It's a slash slash slashy beat em up brawler with a little bit of the funky noise of youthful futility thrown in. It sounds pretty good to us. <laughs> We're looking forward to our full review of Samurai Champloo's sidetrack when it comes out in the spring of 2006. Yeah! Don't you just want to wipe his face off? Shut up. Scruffy facial hair doesn't make you look cool. It makes you look like you failed puberty. Yeah, you know, I retook puberty in summer school. I don't want to know this. What? This is the weapon. Up next. Russian blocks. Lead no contest. It's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Welcome back to X Play. Puzzle games at their best, they are a seductive mix of tedious and delightful. With a healthy dose of infuriating. Perhaps the greatest puzzle game of all time is back in a new incarnation. Here's our review of Tetris DS. <laughs> If this brings back fond memories of days past, do we ever have a game for you? Tetris DS is the latest update of the quintessential puzzle game you know and love. Over the years, countless developers have tried to reinvent the basic gameplay with little success. Anybody here remember Hattress? Yeah, I didn't think so. Fortunately, Tetris DS knows when to keep it simple and when to get creative. The main game is in full force here, thanks to a nifty twist. You can now hold a puzzle piece for later use, which adds some fresh strategy to the mix. If you get tired of the same old way to play, you can explore an astounding number of new game types. Puzzle mode has you trying to clear the entire board with a specific number of shapes. It's easy at first, but once it gets going, these brain teasers become agonizingly difficult. Um, in a good way. Push mode is two-player Tetris with a twist. The board is divided into two zones, yours and your competitors. When you successfully clear multiple lines, it shoves the whole mess towards your enemy side. Whoever fills up the other player's end zone wins. 
Other editions don't fare so well. Take touch mode, for example. Here, you can use the stylus to move shapes until you clear the board. There's no time limit and not much pressure, so it definitely comes up short in the challenge department. Fortunately, the presentation in Tetris DS truly blows us away. If you're an old school Nintendo fan, prepare yourself for a blissful cavalcade of references to classic games. But why stop at Tetris? Why not update other best-selling games with lovable Nintendo characters? Like Princess Peach's Parcheesi Party. Yay, you're playing Parcheesi. Or Toadstool Casino. Yay, you're playing Blackjack. Or Trivial Pursuit Kid Icarus Edition. Question one, will there ever be a sequel to Kid Icarus? That one's a rental. This may just be the most fun we've had with a puzzle game since, well, since the first Tetris came out. Tetris DS scores a four. Yay! Out of five. Tetris, Rubik's Cube, I wonder why all the great puzzle games of the 80s came from Russia, hmm? Because the puzzle game is an excellent way to kill time when you're somewhere you don't want to be. And I guess when you live in a freezing cold country where you wait in line all day to buy toilet paper, you're always somewhere you don't want to be. This is why Russia is so good at producing alcoholics and long, boring novels. Mm. In a moment, an automotive MMO. Bibbity bobbity boo. It's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Welcome back to X Play. Massively multiplayer online role playing games are an excellent way to lose your job your girlfriend, and six months of your life. But when they're good, it's all worth it. Unfortunately, so far, most of them have been limited in their vision of what an MMO can be about. Mostly elves killing kobolds with the occasional sci-fi scenario to shake things up. But we finally have an MMO that really changes up the gameplay by putting you in customizable vehicles. Here's our preview of Auto Assault. Welcome to the wonderful world of massively multiplayerness. Isn't it amazing? La 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 la. Oh, what a wonderful open-ended world I find myself in. La 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 la. Dum -da -dum -da -dum -da -dum. I could run around here forever and ever and ever and ever. <sighs> you know something? Screw this. I want tanks, blue tanks, and guns, and shanty towns, and sea monsters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smile, you son of a bitch. That's what I want, and that's what I need. That's why I got my hands on this hot preview of the upcoming game, Auto Assault. Auto Assault understands these needs, and judging by the title, I think you know what this game is about. If you haven't deduced by now, you're a car in a, hmm, this is new, post-apocalyptic future where you have to live by your own wits and car to survive. But even more important than that, you can destroy stuff. All kinds of stuff. Like Bob Marley's childhood home, or Adam Sessler's childhood home, or giant insect thingies or humans. Lots and lots of screaming, whiny humans. From what our sources tell us about the storyline, aliens have come to Earth and, oh, let's just let the narrator tell us. The alien crashes brought the contamination to Earth. Sure, when all else fails, always blame the aliens. Apparently, you'll be able to play as one of three distinct races. There's the mutants, Brett Ratner direction not included, the biomechs, Cyborgs with paranoid delusions, and humans, puny, puny humans. And since this is an MMORPG, each race will have their own strengths, weaknesses, passions, and fears. As you drive around this wonderful, desolate landscape, which kind of resembles Wisconsin on a good day, there will be missions to complete, resources to collect, and skills to improve. You know, the typical role-playing stuff. Whee! An interesting concept we like is the ability to reverse engineer weapon technology from your enemies. That's something America's been doing since July 2nd, 1947. Did we mention the arenas? Or as they used to say back in the day, ARENA! The game looks good, it looks vast, it looks promising, and it's coming soon. Auto Assault is scheduled for release later this year. 
X-Play will bring you our review then. That's what we do, and we do it oh so well. And modestly. Whee! Fantasy MMOs are great, but with World of Warcraft dominating the market, it seems like the best answer is to branch off into new genres. Yeah, it seems like a good idea, but look at how The Sims Online tanked. Yeah, the problem with The Sims Online wasn't it was a new genre, is that there was really nothing to do. Yeah. I mean, it was essentially just a chat room, which really all MMOs are, but at least in World of Warcraft, you can go off and kill an Onyxia while you're bitching about your girlfriend. In The Sims, you can sort of create your own goals for your character, but once you get a bunch of people involved, it gets kind of pointless, like my life. Yeah, exactly like real life. Wow. Maybe... When you realize The Sims is too much like your life, you might as well go live your life. Well, I was actually able to get things accomplished in The Sims. Like going to the bathroom? Cleaning. Cleaning. Yeah, it's going much to easier the to click the puddle and click the button than to actually get a mop and clean something up. It's, 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 it's an idealized world. Mm. Damn you, Will Wright! <laughs>